Hey everybody, welcome to the laziest crypto show. Oh well, I don't have to do that. Darko's here. All right, cool. G'day, g'day everybody. Smash that like button, smash up that live chat box. Let us know which country you're watching from and what is your favorite crypto right now. Sean, it's good to be back. How are you feeling, my brother from another mother? Feeling pretty good, pretty good. Cheers. Nice. We got my, my pina colada. Yes, I got my uh, water <laughs> and the good old handy crypto tonight mug, as you can see. Yeah, yeah, subscribe, subscribe today. And to Satoshi Sean. When are you going to get a Satoshi Sean mug? Uh, I have a couple glasses that some of my subscribers made for me. Um, I have fridge magnets. Oh, nice. I even have tattoos, temporary tattoos that you can get. Uh, I can send people... Uh, Put my face, put my face on your body. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, there's a lot of stuff we could be talking about. Uh, Darko's going to be working the chat in the Huobi app. Okay. Because um, I suck at it. No yeah. worries. I'll, I can do that. And uh, shout out to Deep Ty, who's saying hi, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Yes, welcome. Deep Ty, what a name. Deep Ty. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. Uh, well, uh, what all do you want to hit on first, man? Um, well, I've got one article I could bring up straight away, actually. And it's an article that I've only been hearing about, but I haven't, I literally have not looked into it. So, yeah, I'm still a bit new to it myself. But I'm sure you heard the news about Michael Saylor getting wrecked for alleged tax fraud. Now, this guy is a big face, a big name in the crypto space, obviously. But apparently, this guy who's been managing over a billion dollars, at least, in funds and crypto has been dodging tax for the last 10 years. And now he's getting sued by a, a U.S. district, I believe, some U.S. district. Have you heard about this one? Yeah, well, we're uh, I think we're a very weird time here in the U.S., um, uh, you know, they wanted to add, I think it's like 80 some thousand new IRS agents, armed agents, which they specifically said in the job posting that they would have to be comfortable using, you know, deadly force. Um, oh. so I think we're, and then they pulled it down because it went viral, but yeah. And to put context to that, you know, the U S is a huge country with uh, huge borders uh, in the north and the south, um, and we only have eighteen thousand border patrol agents, and they wanted to add additional eighty-five thousand IRS agents. So that's that's an armed army to to go after regular citizens. So I think we're about to have a like a tax. I don't know uh, some tax tyranny here in the U.S. that they're going to be yeah. moving, moving towards. Um, I did hear something about that, actually. And when I heard the news about Sailor getting sued for fraud, tax fraud because he didn't do his taxes for the last 10 years, the first thing that came to my mind was John McAfee straight away. And yeah. John said, how can it be tax fraud if I didn't submit, submit my tax return? Yeah. I, didn't fraudul I didn't fraudulent or fraudulate anything. I just yeah. didn't submit. So to say tax fraud means that you lodged fraudulent paperwork, right? Right. Yeah, that would be uh, right. I think that would be easier to get off, you know, because um, you're you you hit the nail on the head. You just basically give if the intent isn't there to commit fraud, um, and you can argue it's really weak though because you don't have to do taxes if you make less than like three hundred fifty dollars or something like that. Mm. So I guess they could say, hey, by not doing taxes. You were saying that you made less than three hundred fifty dollars, but that's such a weak argument, you know. Yeah, but what if he uh, offsets his tax, so his expenses made so many deductions from his tax return? Yeah, that well, also, like you can just yeah. not do your tax taxes. You can choose that, and then you get like okay, if you speed over the speed limit. You get, which a I ticket, do. you get a ticket for speeding. Which I don't. You, you don't get a ticket for committing fraud. You know what I mean? No. Um, so if if you have you have the option 
and you have the choice to speed. And you know what the penalty will be if you get caught. So by not doing if, if there if there's a penalty for not doing your taxes when you're supposed to, I think you can put it off for two years or three years. Mm. So my parents used to do that. They only filed once every three years. They would put it off. Yeah. But if there's a penalty for making the choice to not do your taxes, then it's not fraud. If mm. you're if you're you're you're, if you're say I'm consciously making a choice that I'm going to put off doing my taxes, pay this you know thousand uh, dollar you know fee. Mm. So that I can not pay my taxes and keep that money and earn more interest on it. You know, um, you raise a good point because what you're saying in a nut nutshell is if you get a speeding ticket and you don't pay it, you don't get charged with fraud for not paying the speeding ticket. It's the yeah. same with the tax return. But then again, if you haven't lodged it, there's no charge for you to pay. So the, immediately the first thing that came to my mind when I said John McAfee was, is Michael Saylor going to get a whack tattoo next? Oh no, nah. but it, 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 basically it's like if you if you speed, you get pulled over, and they give you a ticket for fraud, but then or give you a ticket for speeding, but then arrest you, saying mm. you were committing fraud by acting like you weren't speeding. It, it just it makes no sense, you know. But what if you went to where you were speeding? Yeah, you and it, what, it, if you lied and say I wasn't aware that I was speeding, my speedometer mm. is broken. You know, maybe something like that is a stretch, and then they'd have to take your car. And do tests on it and say that you're then you can I tell you something though before I forget on that topic right there in, okay. in terms hey, of speeding hey, tickets. Hey, Alex. Yeah. When when you get pulled over for speeding and the officer asks you what's your reason for speeding or why were you speeding, whatever answer you give is an admission of guilt. Right? Huh. You know what? You you right. raise a really good point because that's not how it is in the United States. United States, but this, you, can, you but, can lie to a cop. You can lie to whoever you want until they say, I'm going to read you your rights. And then this is formal. Once it's formal, if you lie, then you could get charged with impeding an investigation or something like that. But you have to read your rights first. Mm. So that, that is an, it's an interesting point. Sailor was never read his rights. So technically, he really couldn't have committed fraud and couldn't. Anything he said, even if he lies, it's not against the law to lie. You know, it's like, oh, do I look fat in this? Yeah, you're under arrest for fraud. Mm -hmm. did not happen, you know. So, so on that note, if, as I said, you can get pulled over. The officer will ask you, what's your reason for speeding? You could say, um, I thought I was having a heart attack and I was rushing to the hospital. That's an admission of guilt. Um, my friend had a, an accident at home and he's dying. Again, that's an admission of guilt. You're not going to get out of it. But the only way you can get out of it with saying something, a response to the question, what's your reason, is I wasn't speeding. I was not aware I was speeding. I was not speeding. Is your speed camera collaborated correctly? When was the last time it was collaborated? When was the last time it was tested? That's the only way. So in mean, Michael Saylor's case, going back to crypto and tax fraud allegations, he could turn around and also say, I did not tax evade or tax fraud anything to his knowledge but then again i'm no legal expert either so and it, and every case varies from country to country city to city state to state obviously but yeah it's really it, i just find it really silly when i hear things like these stories where they say oh it's tax fraud when the person hasn't even submitted any documents that are fraudulent okay. it doesn't make no, sense no, 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 no. hold on okay we, you know I, I we should have done this what 10 minutes ago yeah. I yeah, you're sure. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Definition. Yes. The definition of tax fraud: when an individual or business entity willfully and intentionally falsifies information on a tax return, which he didn't do, to limit the amount of taxes they'll have to pay. Which that he didn't is do. The, that's the legal definition of what tax fraud is. So if he didn't file taxes, that's not tax fraud. It's correct. Moronic that they would charge him with that. It's silly. It's stupid. It's dumb. silly and stupid. Another good, good uh, example. Yes. Very good. And let's quickly go to the live chat box, see what's going on here. We have Waldo PDL asking in the live chat box in the official Huawei Global app, what is the future of ETH, Sean? Uh, ETH? ETH going to be great. ETH is uh, on fire. ETH, ETH has paid fire. all the money to all of the uh, politicians they need to pay it to. 
ETH has uh, greased all the palms it needs to grease. Um, ETH has done all the crooked shit that it has to to be successful. Mm. I'm sorry. Did you, did you see the Should picture? I have said that? No, uh, that's fine. But did you see the recent picture of Vitalik Buterin exposing his hard fork on Twitter? Yes, I, I, I don't think anyone could not have seen that Yeah, Bro, when that came up in my news feed, the first thing I saw before the comment of the tweet and the comments beneath it was the photo, right? And the photo popped up in my news feed. I saw I, him. I saw then... it before I read anything or knew anything about it. Either. Yeah, yeah. And then I at first at I was like, oh, she's cute. Whoa. <laughs> a, little, a little too cute for Vitalik. Yeah, it's like, oh, she's cute. Dang. Okay. Yeah. And then I thought to myself, is that just a shadow angle? The picture is maybe no, you didn't. Taken... No, you didn't. It was obvious, dude. You were, there was no way you questioned Oh, it was that. obvious when I saw the comments. I thought sure. he had a banana in his pocket. I mean, it was, <laughs> I was, I was like, whoa. Did, did yeah. you see someone posted as well after that? They posted a tweet saying, um, ETH merge is coming. And they posted a photo underneath it. And there was an aerial shot of a city. And there was a massive shadow of a penis covering the city. <laughs> I saw a lot of people like, Vitalik has my entire portfolio in his pants. Yeah. Uh, Good on him, though. Good on him. Yeah. Well, we got uh, Phil C. in the chat says that he hardly thinks that Sailor is worried about this. Um, I've got a bunch of people in the chat here. Alex, Hoddle, but for some reason, YouTube says there are zero people watching. Of course. Oh, yeah. Of course. Now that I bring that up, though, it'll probably, uh, you know, probably fix itself. Yeah, right. Good luck. But on that note, um, Waldo in the official Huobi Global app is saying Sailor is showing her tailor. Uh, we have Oscar, who's watching from Brazil. Jonas says, hello, hello. Shout out to you, Jonas. Or Jonas. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, the, good morning to you, Jonas. Shout out. And uh, Jonas is saying hello, Satoshi Sean, as well. Hey, Jonas. Um, Glad to have y'all here. What's our uh, what's our view count over there on the Hobby app? Uh, we currently have, without any app notification, we have three thousand four hundred people watching, which is really really good considering we haven't pushed out a notification for this live stream. So exactly. very very good. That's very a lot very of good watching the stream. All right. Yes, uh, we have in the live chat as well, Enoch, good morning to you too. Uh, Oscar, good night to you too. Edwin is saying Baby Doge, Coin and Moon. I remember being a holder of Baby Doge. I made some good money on Baby Doge. I, I think I you were, put... you, were, you were one of the first uh, people to talk about it. I do know that. I did a lot of streams yeah. on Baby Doge, a lot. And I did some 24-hour live streams of the charts as well. And people were coming in and using the live chat and talking crypto and Baby Dogecoin, and it was really, really cool. Um, it pumped for a bit. I think I put in three and a half thousand dollars on that one, and and within a matter of weeks, it went to something like twenty four thousand. And by that point, I thought, you know what, I won't be too greedy. I'm going to take profit. No, take you're profits. you're smart like that. You're not like old Satoshi Sean. Not at all. Oh, you, st- you don't hold that shit until it starts dying. No. Nah, but we all learn from our mistakes. I mean. Um, I lost a lot of money doing the opposite in the past, as you know, as well. I've told you already. Uh, I lost a lot, a lot of money in the past by just holding, holding, holding. I'll wait till it gets to this level. I'll wait till it gets to that yeah, level. Yeah, that's then... the thing, dude. I'll take profit here. And then mm. it's like the devil knows, you know, and then it'll like I'll take profit at a dollar and it'll go to 98.5 cents. And it'll stay there yeah. for a minute. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm just ready for it to hit. Ready for it to hit. And he's just like behind me, you know, wringing his hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who 50 cents. What? I took a nap. What the hell? Half my portfolio is gone. What just happened? Yeah. It happens so often in crypto. So often. We have in the live chat box as well, SK Crypto saying good morning. Good morning to you. We have uh, Oscar saying, boy, boy, not there. I'm assuming that's good evening in some language. And just quickly going through the live chat before we proceed with the conversation further. Um, Solomon, shout out to you in the live chat as well. Uh, VSHV saying thanks for the stream. You are most welcome. And please also follow us on YouTube, Crypto Tonight for me and Satoshi Sean for Satoshi Edward, Sean. Crypto Tonight on YouTube and Satoshi Sean. And you can watch some of our past stuff. Also, leave a comment on anything, uh, the past videos and today. And you'll be registered and subscribed 
to me and you'll be registered to win yourself some crypto. That's all right. Uh, to, uh, to see Folgo, I can't pronounce that, saying, give us a wonderful day. We shall give you a very wonderful day. And VSHV is asking, how much is taxes? Is okay investment profit or loss? So how much taxes is okay investment profit or loss? Um, Zero taxes is okay. No that'd taxes. be nice. Oh, that, is, uh, that is okay, yeah. I do believe in Dubai, they don't pay income tax in Dubai. Really? Well, there's... Uh, yeah, because the government yeah, makes so much... It used to be that way. It is, if you're a citizen there. Um, yeah, the government makes so much money on um, fuel exports, apparently, that the people in, of Dubai live in a tax-free society. That's why everybody's rich over there, apparently. They all drive Ferraris and Lamborghinis. And the average wage, I think, is something like a quarter of a million dollars a year. I could be wrong. And you are wrong uh, for the regular folks. Um, I'm talking about the regular folks. Well, I guess if you're um, a lot of non-citizens, people go there to work. And uh, and it's not that high. They don't make that much money. Um, and it's kind of tough for them to get money back home to their home country, which is one of the big reasons crypto is uh, is really exploding in that area. Because the banking infrastructure is not great. Yep. Because when it comes to, to, to the Muslim faith, banking is not really uh, really tailor-made for that. Because when it comes to making making money, you really aren't supposed to make money off of nothing. Make money without work. Make money, you know, so um, so a lot of a lot of the banking practices are frowned upon because they're kind of evil. <laughs> which yeah. I mean, they've known that longer than we have. Um but, but yeah, uh, when it comes to taxes, um, a lot of the really positive things are changing just because crypto is so new that a lot of countries didn't know how to handle it and they mm. kind of ignored it. So, That's true. But now they're starting to see, oh, man, we're giving up so much money, uh, and, which means we're giving up power as a government. So we, we don't want to do that. So we let's wanna, print more money. We want to get as much money as we can from people uh, to keep them down and to control them. Um and then get as much power as we can, once again, to control the people that we have. But it's our, our correct. Board. Correct. And that's part of their strategy. But what really is their strategy? Their strategy really, besides the whole tax thing, obviously, besides all that. But the real strategy here is as, as long as we can keep people poor, they will not open their own businesses because our current large businesses that bring the big tax money need paid slaves. Right? That, that's the agenda here. Mm -hmm. Every, that's why a lot of people notice every time they get a little bit ahead in life, they fall three steps back because yeah. the system is not designed to permit them and, or make it easier for them to get also, ahead in life. Also, I think when it comes to, to governments, if they're if you're dependent upon the government, you get some kind of assistance. Mm. That it's a it's a trap that they lock your family into, where if you try to improve, if you can improve yourself. 30% your income, uh, that's not enough to make a huge difference, but it's enough for the government to take away that, that, that subsidy, to take away that help, which is more than 20% of your income. So you're actually hurting yourself and hurting your family by trying to improve. So you get stuck there. You yeah, and when, you're, and when you're on those um, government benefits, you're basically living underneath the poverty line anyway. Mm. So they're saying you can live these standards – but everybody knows you can't. Yeah. So it's a catch-22. Um, just quickly back to the live chat. By the way, to everybody watching in the live chat, if you have any questions, this is an open talk show. There is no main topic here. This is the lazy crypto talk show. We're all feeling lazy. We are and we're just having lazy. an open conversation here. So please interact with us so we can interact with you and smash us your questions. This is what yep. the show is all about. Talking about um, government changing things. Um, yep. We had talked about before the show uh, what's going on with BitBoy, and ah yes, there's, it's a it's it's a huge deal because it's a lot of uh, commentators and investigative reporters. A lot of these you know YouTube channels like Coffeezilla and and uh, that moist guy I forget his name, but a lot of people are, are talking about this that are outside of the outside of crypto YouTube. So what's going and, on exactly? Because well, I haven't heard anything. Well, there was this one guy. Yeah. And he did a, a real like a hit piece. Um, it was it was like the, this YouTuber scams his 
um, his his audience, which mm. there's a lot of piece of shit YouTubers out there that do that. Me, um, me, no, I'm joking. A lot. Well, no, we know, we know, we know several of them. I mean, I got burned. I got burned hardcore. I lost by by scammer tubers. Yeah, you know, I lost nine hundred thousand dollars. I lost all my portfolio, everything. I lost everything because well, of YouTuber. one of these guys. Because yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, we know that it happens, and mm. if someone has a good audience, they'll usually they'll pump a coin, they'll buy a bunch of it cheap, they'll pump it, and then they'll dump it on their uh, on their community. Old which school, is yeah. The wor worst scammiest thing you can do, mm. and that's kind of what they were saying that uh, the Bit Boy had done, um, but that also that he just pushes you know crap and blah blah blah, um, and it got it got picked up, man. Uh, it got picked up and talked about by a lot of people. Um, but he 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 sued this guy. He he sued this guy, and then this guy went out and said, "Hey, man, this this piece of shit scammer guy is is uh, is is suing me for all this money." And he like had uh, it was just a, it was like another hit piece. He set up a mm -hmm. GoFundMe. Within forty eight hours, this guy had a quarter million dollars. Oh, really? Him for a seventy five thousand really? dollar lawsuit. So. And a bit was being attacked by a lot of people. Uh, he was on Pompliano, and Pompliano was like, "Hey man, you're you're a scammer because you said that XRP would go to five dollars or could go to, could go to five dollars." Never. And he went. Bitboy did. He did lose it. He went kind of crazy, and he was like, "You said you have a thumbnail here that says Bitcoin go to two hundred forty million dollars or two point four million or something." He goes, "That's mm. the same thing. There's no difference between you saying that and me saying that." And he showed, I mean, he did like, uh, XRP already went to 350. So it's not like a, it's like a stretch, you know, mm. but he, he, I remember the video. It was a long time ago. I but, think I remember it too, actually. But he, you know, he showed math and it could go to this and could go to that. It could, it could. I don't think it, I don't know. Actually, I don't know about XRP. I throw my hands up and I don't fucking know when it comes to XRP. Um, it's a completely different animal. It's not connected to everything else. It's very different. The it's connected to the banks. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what it could do. Darko hates it. I don't love it, but it is what it is. Um, mm. But anyway, so so Bitboy went on this. Pompliano was hitting him, and then all these YouTubers started just talking about this huge. Uh, he was such a huge scammer, and I'm I'm friends with Bitboy. Uh, my channel used to be bigger than his back mm. in the you know a year or two ago. He has worked his ass off, man. He puts yeah, out bro. content, two, three videos a day. He doesn't do so much anymore because he's made it. Um, he's made it with his investments. But he he made a conscious effort, I know, almost a year ago to just not do any any uh, paid um, any paid reviews. spots, or any paid reviews, which is so funny to me because people will do like a hit piece. And it's like, this guy is such a piece of shit. He took money. Uh, mm. You know, to do it, review and stuff. By the way, this video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, how can you say that? Um, if you're, if you, and I don't, I do paid work. You do paid work. The the thing is, if you go on, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of pieces of shit out there. A lot of fake oh, channels yeah. where the views are fake, the comments are fake. Everyone's oh, fake. You can read through, go read, go look at three of their videos, and then read through their, you know, three hundred comments, and they're all the same. But, bro, yeah. I love you, bro. Bro, you give the best information. Good. So Good project. Education is the best. All the same. But then you go to the, the next video. Bro, I love you. You're bro. You give such good entertainment and education. They're all yeah. the same thing. And nothing is specific. You know, you could do a, a, a review on Peach Coin, And there's not one comment that's like, you know, Peach Coin's pretty good. No. They're all like, <laughs> this project is amazing. I will invest in this project. This yeah. project and this channel, they make me not commit suicide. I mean, they're all the same, the same comment for multiple videos. So they're all fake. But those people mm. go on like, bro, it's the best crypto I've ever seen. I am gonna get into this so hard, man. This is the greatest. The team, the team, they were they're not even from Earth, man. They came from heaven. They're the greatest. Oh, the really? I haven't heard that one. That's 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 a that's a scam. That's shit. But if you go on and say, hey, man, I gotta pay my bills. You know, uh, this is a paid spot. They wanted me to review this. I'm going to review it. The team, team's okay. This guy uh, is all right. This guy has really good, you know, uh, experience in this. Um, these are the tokenomics. This is it. Here's information. 
Mm. There's, I don't think there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you're working, you're, you're reviewing it. You're reading a fucking 50 page white paper. Yeah. You're telling everyone about it. You're putting it out there. You, you paid for your time and for your work. Now, if you lie, that's a scam. But if you're mm -hmm. like, Hey man, do your own research. Here's the information on it. If you like it, go look into it some more. That's, that's it. That's, that's completely fine. That's, I think that's, yeah. That's, yeah. Um, but if you, if you lie about it or if you just, if you, if you specifically hide shit or if you lie about it and then you have a big audience and you, it pumps and then you dump on them, that's also a piece of shit. Yes. Um, but that's just my two cents. But Bitcoin, so, so, or Bitcoin, yeah. Bitcoin, he, he hasn't done any paid work because he is more than doing fine on, on he doesn't need the paid work. Right. He doesn't need it. And, what he, and he, but but he is his own worst enemy, dude. Because he went out and he did a, he did a, but he did a transparent video. Hey man, I wanted to do this privately with this guy. I just wanted to take down the video. He wouldn't. Um, he put it all public. It's all public. I'm embarrassed. I'm, we're dropping the lawsuit. So then everyone did videos on. You see, he's such a scammer that now that he's found out, he's dropping the lawsuit. He he was just a. I mean, he really is a good guy. He really is. Uh, mm. He just, he's worked really hard. And I don't think he's, And but to be, to be fair, the video that they're all talking about was bad. He he was bad. Um, yeah. He said shit he shouldn't have said. Um, whether he was genuinely excited about it at the time. And that's the thing. They're not, people aren't talking about, it, and they're calling it a rug pull. Which, from what I've seen and what I've looked at, it's not a rug pull; it's a failed project. Yeah, they're all like, the hey, "Look at this! It was six dollars. Now it's worth nothing." Mm. It's a rug pull. That's not a, a rug pull. Is when the team does shit and then the team pulls all the money and skips town. See um, you later. That's not. That's as far as I know. That's not what happened. The team was anonymous. And mm. he said, the oh, team "There's a red flag right there." That was his exact words. <laughs> a lot of people say that it's a red flag because the team's anonymous. There's nothing you know, wrong with that. But the code is wide Sign open. It. The code's open source. Every, all this is open source. Blah blah blah. So, right. sure, but he, sure, did, he sure. did say things that were, man, I don't see how this cannot go up. You sure. know, cert certain things like that. If a code is open source, does that mean anything to you? Will you understand it? No. So who gives a shit about open code, open source code that everyone keeps talking about? Because nobody understands it anyway. Developers. Yeah. This is the thing I never he hear anyone talk about. Oh, it's open, open source, open code. Yeah, but do you understand what you're going to read in it? No. Then forget about it. <clears throat> Tick that one off. Cross that one off the list. To yeah. me, <clears throat> a, a team is important if there is trust involved. Celsius. Mm. <clears throat> if you're giving your money, you don't hold the keys. If you're if it, your crypto is not yours, the team is very important because you have to have someone to go after if they steal your money. Mm. It's not as huge of a deal if it's something like Dogecoin. Who the f where's the team on Dogecoin? Where's the team on Bitcoin? There is literally that's he's synonymous. Yep. Satoshi is anonymous. You can't say it's. A terrible thing to be an anonymous developer when that's what satoshi did um mm. is it a, is it a flag yes it's a red flag that should make you look harder at the project um especially an up and coming project and never it's the biggest it's it's an automatic no if you have to put any trust in it if they mm. hold your money if you don't hold your crypto and you don't hold those keys projects no 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 you don't yeah. do it because <clears throat> you can't trust someone. You have no one to go after. So what's the story now with BitBoy? Yeah, what's the end result? And really, it's, a, it's, just, it's still a huge thing. It's only been about a week. Oh, it's I mean, still ongoing, is it? But It's over, but it's like now all the all these other you know channels are doing more hit pieces on it, trying uh -huh. to you know, get views and get... It's, but, so. Thanks for letting me know. I might do one as well. Yeah, go on. And it's... Well, it's fair. I mean, it's fair because he did... He talked about this project un 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 uncomfortably positive. 
whether he was mm. just really did like it. I don't know. It was called Pamp. P A M P. I heard about that one. You know, you think you do, but that's a it's a gold company. Oh, okay. Because I thought about it too, but it's a. Uh, if they have, I think they have like a. Uh, they're one of the biggest gold companies in the world. If you if you buy gold, like you can buy it from a. Uh, like Seuss, Gold Seuss, mm. um, and something else. Pamp. So they released their own token, did they? No, I think they're completely separate. Oh, well, like name okay. recognition, you know, like Coca Cola coin, but you had nothing to do with Coca Cola. Oh, okay. That kind of thing. Um, yeah. See, he's, Phil said it before. He, he heard me say Pam Seuss. Pam Seuss. And then there's there's another there's another Seuss. Uh, if you buy gold or or silver, um, you'll recognize okay. it. But it's 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 something that a lot of us have been talking about that that there's going to be regulation coming. Um, that people who didn't disclose that it was a, a paid, uh, and, uh, you know, review, you can get in trouble, man. Um, uh, yeah, that's been around for a while though now, but YouTube has a, if you do a video, there's a button you click. So this is a paid, paid review. It's a yeah. paid video. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah. Sponsored video yeah, at the beginning of up. the stream, hmm. which there's nothing wrong with doing paid content. Huh. If you disclose that it's paid content. Because people will be a little bit more leery. But if you're just like, this is just information, man. You know, and I never say that I'm going into something if I don't go into it. Mm. There hasn't been a ton of stuff that I've been really excited about. I went into into Vetter, um, which I thought was really, really good. I still, and you can look at my portfolio, man. Um, Vetter just 3X'd in the last two weeks. And it just dropped back to where it was. Mm. Uh, I should have fallen and I didn't. But they had a big... They had a big launch coming out, and it was that you know buy the rumor, sell the news, man. It was oh, going, really? Going yeah. up, going up, and I was like, it launched two days ago, back down to where it was. Literally, did you, did you do it again? I totally, totally did it again, man. Because I was like, man, I wanted to buy more and I didn't, and now it's so freaking expensive. But I, sh- I should have, I should have, because it, because it was, it, they had a huge launch, and I was like. I really should sell right before this. Buy the rumor, sell the news. Buy the rumor, sell the news. <laughs> Didn't do it, man. Didn't do it. Didn't do it. And now, still holding my same bag, and it's worth the same thing it was, you know, like three weeks ago. So, oh no, no. Yeah. What am I going to do with you, Sean? What will I do with you? That. Uh, what else did I go over that I, I put into? Um, oh, I just go look at my channel. Well, while you think about that, I'll go back to the live chat box in the Huobi Global app. And James and Avi is saying he loved the Meta Baby stuff I did last night. So last night I did a, the strangest interview I've ever done. And this is coming from someone who's made over 500 videos. I've interviewed at least 60 brands from across the world. But the Meta Baby interview last night was by far the most strangest, the most weirdest interview I've ever done. And yes, yes I'm, allowed to, I'm allowed to say that, actually. Um, basically, it was I was interviewing, it was like an avatar of a person in the metaverse. So I think someone was behind the camera and they had things attached to their body and their face and they digitized themselves and I was interviewing that. And they had cool. like a, a metaverse baby voice as well. And it was just super strange. Like I was laughing throughout and I was trying not to laugh too much because to me it was just, I was full of giggles, but it was just so strange because I was talking to a person, but it wasn't a person. Yeah. That makes sense. So yeah, um, I'll be uploading the replay of that to Crypto Tonight YouTube channel next week. Or for the people on Huobi Global, they can watch it in the app. The replay is up there as well. But yeah, that was really weird. Good, but weird. Um, we have Leonard Leonardi in the live chat saying, good morning, sir. Good morning to you too. Um, shout out to Char. Uh, oh, Thecha is saying they're still holding on to baby Dogecoin. Wow. That's that's effort. That's awesome. Um, well, I hope it's awesome. I don't know. But it's good to see. Um, what I mean by awesome, it's, it's awesome to see pe- people still have patience that's what i mean they still know how to hodl um ernest is asking any good coins to buy for long investment we can't really recommend them and we can't give financial advice but 
if I was to pick one, obviously it would be Huobi Token, not financial advice. Yeah, Huobi Token is so I so we been doing really well lately, yeah. Really well. Still so undervalued, dude. Um, so here, you look this, this videos I've done. Uh there's us right now. Yay! Uh, Hello, our live stream. Was already it was already a, I bought the NFTs. I played the game. I put I, I bought the uh like what three five five NFTs. Two yeah. of them are for like staking and making money. Three of them are needed to play the game. They're characters. Uh, so mm. I'm put into that. Um, Cardano Island uh, over on Vir Virtual Prime. I bought like three pieces of property on that. Um, and that's pretty much it for the last month, man. Yeah. Uh, There's a video game. The rest of it's like meme review. Uh, Economic Ninja. What else was there? Pre-search. I've got three, three or four uh, nodes. Um, mm. How's that going right, for you? The pre-search. Good. It's yeah. It's okay. It's not. Um, no, it's good. It's it's a thing, dude. It's a good return for me, but mm. the nodes are very cheap. So um, if you're making one hundred twenty percent, but you know, the, the node only costs you 150 bucks. Oh, wow. You know, you're making $12 a month or something. I love it. So it's like uh, not $12 wow. a month. But when you look at what you put in, it's that's not much of anything. Um, you know, and yeah. I think it's really important for decentralized search when it comes to, uh, you know, like what Google has, the control they have on everything. It's important to, it's important to support that. Just like it's important mm. to support like library and Odyssey and, you know, the, these alternative <clears throat> um things to YouTube stuff mm -hmm. like den social from dragon chain like that's a a diff you know it's a decentralized social media platform um it, it's they're important even if it's like for like uh, monero a lot mm -hmm. of things like monero and privacy coins that are really i think important to support in mine if you can even if you're doing it at a loss because you're mm -hmm. supporting the network you're supporting that uh you're supporting privacy in general, you know, um, making it harder for the evil powers that be to kind of shut that stuff down. Um, Dave from uh, from Dead Social Distant uh, said that he said that the other like the other week or so, mm. and it did really hit me, you know, because we get wrapped up on just making money and you know just like this n number going up and, and increasing your portfolio, increasing your wealth when we lose sight of what crypto was really started for the, the, the importance of it, you know, and, and the importance sometimes of just backing something to, you know, talk about a project, even if you're not getting paid, even if you're not making money, just because mm -hmm. it, it, people need to hear about it. It needs to be successful mm -hmm. because it's better for humanity. You know, it's yeah. better for our community. It's better for the world. Um, I, I also know two centralized platforms. That's right. You heard me correctly. Two centralized platforms that are really, really good for educational crypto content. The first one is Satoshi Sean on YouTube channel. And the second one is Crypto Tonight on YouTube channel. So not bad. Really good for centralized platforms. Yeah, for the centralized people, yeah. <laughs> um, just quickly back to the live chat. Uh, we have Steph saying kudos. Marguerite, shout out to you. We love you too. Uh, Jonas is saying Doge Boom. And just scrolling down, we have a lot of comments to go through. Uh, Jonas is saying Market Bullish Pump Bitcoin. I'm not really sure right now because the overall global trading volume is pretty damn low. And when I, and when I say pretty damn low, it's scary low. So will it continue to drop? If it does, we, we could expect further drops in prices. But if, if this is going, going to be the point where it plateaus and there's going to be a bounce back, then this that could happen very sooner than later as well but right now the global trading volume last i checked before we went live was approximately 60 billion dollars last 24 hours which sounds like a lot and it is but by crypto standards it's pretty bad right now yeah it's really low for really low for all trading one yeah but um, but with the price having kind of stayed where it has and eth is uh, ETH has had some uh, decent runs here in the past few days. Mm. That's really, it's really positive. You know what I mean? Because it's not, it's not just dropping with, like you said, when volume, you know, goes that low, 
usually the price kind of follows. Um, yeah. So for everything to be kind of holding where it is, and there's not a lot of people. Part of that low volume is there's not a lot of people selling either. So, mm. you know, there's 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 good and bad, but I think overall it's kind of positive. You think? I do, I do, because I don't. It's not just dropping straight down. You know what I mean? Mm, uh, true. There's not a lot of people buying. There's not a lot of people selling. You know, there's uh, and the price has been kind of holding, and not not really plummeting below that twenty thousand dollar mark. ETH like broke above fifteen a couple times. What's it at right now? Bitcoin? No. Oh, ETH. ETH right now is currently trading at $1,595. It is up 1.4% since we started this live stream and up 2.6% for the last 24-hour window with 24-hour trading volume of $14.5 billion. The global crypto trading volume has also moved up since the start of this stream to just above $61 billion. If and you look at me for the past seven days, it's 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 broke seventeen hundred a couple of times. Really? Yeah. Look at the past. Oh, uh, yeah. You could be right, actually. So it's uh, that's positive. That's very positive for the for low volume. For low volume, yes, but we do have the merge coming up soon, don't we? September this month. Was it this month? What? The ETH merge. Yes, it's supposed to be. I think mid September. I think it was. See, uh, this is something Phil said that about 90% of Bitcoin in circulation has been held for a year or more. So a lot less people are selling. Yeah, but does that take into account the lost Bitcoin as well that people have thrown away in hardware wallets and lost and been locked out of the past? I would say that's taking into account a lot of this institutional money that came in and bought and they're just holding. You know? Oh, okay. So circul literally circulating, sort of, even though they're not circulating, but yeah, part of the circulating supply. Okay. Um, sure. I am going to have a quick look at something just quickly. Um, all right, I've got a weird news article. Good. From Japan. Always weird. Always <laughs> weird. You ready for this Brad. one? I think you'll like this one too, Sean. Ready? Okay. Japan launches boozy competition to encourage young people to drink more alcohol. Hmm. You heard that correctly? Well, you know, old Abe, he's gone now. He wanted people to get out and touch grass. But one <laughs> thing, you know, uh, you know, there's all these weird um, comparisons between Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy. Uh, you know, they both got assassinated. John hmm. F. Kennedy's uh, secretary's name, last name was Lincoln. Lincoln's secretary's last name was uh, Kennedy. There's all these, the times they got shot. There's so many weird things. But President Abe and then Japan, mm. Prime Minister Abe, A-B-E, pronounced Abe. Abe. Yeah. Okay. What's Abe? Abe, but pronounced oh. Japanese. I thought thing. you were going to... Take it into another direction with a, no. another like secret meaning or something. No, Abe. They're both Abe's. Oh, so in Japan they pronounce it Abe. Yeah, but it's spelled A B E, just like. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know yeah. that. Oh. Yep, yeah, just a little weird coincidence, man. Wow, interesting. Illuminati. Used to my ears. Used to my ears. So, Sean, much on for the rest of the weekend. What's your plans? What's my plans? Um. Got a funeral to go to tomorrow. Oh, sorry to hear it. Yeah, it sucks. Um, mm. My Asian son, his, uh, his grandfather died. Oh, who, my, which my condolences. So I was friends with his mom back, you know, when I was a kid and his aunt. So I used to, like, hang out over at their house. And my kids were talking about this, uh, their friend who's Vietnamese, but his last name's Polish. And I was like, that's, oh. a, that's an odd last name. He's a Polish in our small town. Uh, mm. What's his mom's name? And I was like, oh, my God, you're hanging out at the same house that I hung out in high school. They're, you know, you're friends with us. So it was just, just this weird thing. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, he, he passed away. So we're mm. at that funeral tomorrow. Um, this week, I'm going to do a, a, a meme reviews coming up. 
this weekend. Um, I think that's about it. Man, I don't have a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah, nothing till next week. Just gonna be a kind of a chill weekend. Might play some video games. Nice. It's taking it easy, yeah. Yeah. What about you? Uh probably the same. Chill. Play some video games. Drink some booze and start fresh next week. Yeah, you're uh, really busy. You're gonna be so busy this weekend. Don't lie. <laughs> um. Every day is not Sunday, according to Corin in the live chat. And James Ravi is saying more alcohol sold will bring more in tax money. Do they care? Actually, let me just quickly go to the article just to because I actually had this article open for this show two weeks ago and I forgot what it was about because I never it brought is, it up. It is for life. There is a huge tax on alcohol, man. Uh, Huge tax. Yeah, 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 that's correct. Actually, the Japanese government is has launched a nationwide competition encouraging people to drink more alcohol after a big fall in tax revenues. The Sake Viva campaign, run by the National Tax Agency, is calling on 20 to 39 year olds to come up with business plans that will help restore the popularity of alcoholic drinks, which have fallen out of favor because of lifestyle changes among young people. Alcohol consumption in the country was already in decline, but the coronavirus pandemic exasperated it further with residents eating and drinking out much less than usual. At one stage during the pandemic, the sale of alcohol in restaurants was banned, and at another point, it was restricted to certain hours of the day. The competition runs until September 9th and is calling for new products and designs as well as ways to promote home drinking to stimulate demand among young people. You know, Unbelievable. This could, never, this could never happen in Australia or the US. Never. No. no there too, the UN would, would, would go off. I mean, it'd be such the backlash from the whole world. Yeah. Literally. Maybe we should move to Japan, Sean. Yeah, Japan's only I think one of the only countries that can get away with this, dude. They're wow. such an I don't give a fuck country. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, re- they really are, dude. No, I don't they, there's no way they would fly here. But it's all secret here. Like, mm. like uh, during the, the pandemic, you couldn't go to church. They yeah, closed down churches, but they what they left alcohol uh, liquor stores open. Yeah, and it was like that was so blatant. Everyone's like, you, you you can't go to church, but you can go to the liquor store. What the fuck are you trying yeah. to promote? And yeah. and they were uh, the government. Oh, uh, uh, uh. no! Japan's like, hey man, that's tax money. We want some tax money. Go 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 drink and be happy. You know. Yeah, here yeah, the only the only reasons we were allowed to leave the house during lockdown was for uh, grocery shopping, uh, medical shopping, like chemist, pharmacies, things like that, doctor, whatever, and alcohol shops. That, that were basically the three. So yeah. well, in Texas, we did you know whatever we wanted because we don't. We're the mm. Japan of the United States. We don't. We don't care. Plus, we're all armed. <laughs> So, but now in the U.S., we're all armed everywhere because of constitutional carry. So, mm. yeah, uh, fair enough. All right, I'm gonna have a, one more quick look at the live chat box before we give this a wrap, Sean. So, let me have a quick look. Any more questions? That's it. All right. So, to everybody watching, I will be back later for two more streams in Hobby Talk, uh, Hobby app. And they they are already scheduled in the app as well. Huobi Talks and I believe RCCC interview. So please feel free to tune into those later in a few hours. Sean, it's been another lazy crypto See, talk show. Like, speaking of that, I got a new purse. Hey? Yeah. Well, it's, a, it's an ammo bag, but it's like a half is that, backpack. Is that your new purse? It's my new purse. It's where I keep my, <clears throat> where I keep my, poop, my pew pew. Which, oh, you got water gun in there. No, it's my Wather P9. That's what I carry on the regular. Which I was carrying a Turkish Canic, but it's mm. huge, man. It's so big. Yeah. And it's 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 technical, much more. Got a lot more bells and whistles and all, but that's just so comfortable, dude. I always carry two guns with me, left and right. Yeah, I carry those two. <laughs> like, it's, it's good to carry you. Carry a pew pew if you if you can carry a pew pew you should carry a pew pew because you can always defend other people who don't mm. and uh, 
you know, you, you can dial your your nine one one, but that takes time. It takes time. A, a lot can happen time. in two minutes. A lot could happen in twenty. Dude, I, yeah, I was in forty. The, I was in Killeen, which is a it's 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 shit. It's the worst town and one of the worst towns in the world. I want to go there. I hate living close to it. Um, it's gross. I don't like driving through it even. Um, but uh, <clears throat> there's something there's a documentary on Netflix about just how terrible it is. Uh, mm. It used to be the murder capital of the world um, oh, wow. until all the mass shooting started. This is like before when I was a young buck. I was like 20, mm. and it was the one. It was the first mass shooting because before we used to just have a uh, people in post offices and the term came up going postal because it was just postal workers that would go to work and kill everybody. Um, but then we had a restaurant here that this guy drove his pickup truck through the doors into the restaurant, got out, just started shooting everybody. All he wanted was a sandwich. No, he was crazy. So he shot a bunch of people okay. then he got killed. Um, I should a woman that he shot was a chiropractor from Colleen. And mm. she was like, this is terrible that nobody had a gun. And she ran, became a, a state senator, and got concealed carry passed. Like her whole thing was, I'm going to get this passed. So mm. she got concealed carry passed in Texas again. So everybody just had to, take, you know, take a test and prove that you're take a safety course and all that, prove you could shoot, and you could have a concealed weapon. Um, <clears throat> and that's how it was forever, uh, or for years. But now in the, in the United States, we have constitutional carry, which means. Just it's in the constitution. You can carry a gun, seal, concealed, yeah. not concealed. Which you could always not conceal a gun. Like you could walk around with a shotgun or something. Um, mm. Which that I used to work at Domino's when I was young. I was a system manager, and we, you know, we're right by the biggest army base or military base in the world. So a lot of people order pizza. We would have we make like twenty grand, thirty grand in a week. I mean, it was very. Yeah. Or big, you know, a lot of money. So at the, at the end of the night, I would have to go and make a deposit of, of all this money. And we used to call the police. They would meet me out, you know, I'd go out to my car in this back dark alley. And then they would follow me to the bank. I'd drop it off in the night deposit box. And then the police said, hey, man, we're not doing words. You have to pay $100. Mm. So, you know, Domino's like, mm, you know, not paying any money. So I was like, hey, man, I got like, you know, thousands of dollars. I got to go in this little dark back alley into my car just carrying money. What do I do? They're like, carry shotgun. I'm like, I can just carry shotgun. You can carry shotgun and walk around downtown. So it's, it's you know, it's totally legal. Mm. Uh, but then Domino's wouldn't let you have a gun. Which, oh, was, okay. which even in my car, which everybody carried like shotguns and stuff growing up. Like growing up in high school in the parking lot. There's like everyone had a shotgun in their truck just in the window, you know. Um, so technically, people were armed at school, which mm. now now that's that's new again here in uh, in Texas. Uh, all the teachers are being armed now. It oh, just, okay, it just goes by school system. I didn't hear um, about that. Yeah. But a lot of a lot of school systems now they got signs up just for your just be aware, uh, you know, whoever. Uh, the fact the faculty is is armed is allowed to be armed, so if you want to try anything, you'll probably die really quick. Oh, um, good. But what's well, if you know what happened in Evalde with the you know coward police um, and the terrible uh, terrible things that they did, the, the cowardice that they they did they they did a few months ago was it? Yeah, and um, it took forty five minutes to actually enter a room. No, yeah, they were, but they were in there, just like hanging out in the school, and not yeah, yeah, but but, all but it took them like forty five minutes to actually do yeah. something. Yeah, I saw and that. They, and I played with their phones, and there were there were like civilians, like you know, people's parents going in there, and there they stopped them from going in. But mm. anyway, that's that's kind of what's happening now. There's uh, like in Belton, um, the police department went to the had a a big meeting at the school, uh, and they they took an oath. A whole new oath, on top of mm. their regular oath, they took an oath to always, you know, charge into danger, um, to run towards it, to not wait, to not to not report. And so it, there's a real big movement here, mm. where law enforcement's kind of splitting into two different factions, like the yes men, you know, we'll just follow whatever orders are, and the people and the police that are like, no, we're 
we're going to defend people. We're going to do what's right. We're going to, um, we're going to protect the community, which it's, I know we're going off on a tangent here at the end, but it, in the United States, and I think most other countries, the police aren't there to protect you. That's not their job. That doesn't make money. That doesn't make money. Well, Fines it's not, it's not their job money. period. Like, like, uh, it's went to the Supreme Court like five times, and the Supreme Court's always ruled that it's not the job of the police to protect citizens, which is – that's probably why a lot of them become police, but it's not their job. Their job is to enforce the laws of Congress, enforce the laws oh, yeah. of the government. So if, if someone's going to murder you and the police stop him, they're not protecting you. They're stopping him from breaking the law of murdering you. They don't care. It's like not – like if you get hurt in the way, if they knock you over, if they break your leg and step on you while they're stopping it, that's fine. They are there yeah. to stop. You know, cops, yeah, the other, Phil said, the cops are not bound by law to protect you. Like, if it was true, if the police were there to protect you, they see a guy whose taillight is out, and they go to pull him over, and he takes off. They have his license. They know where he lives. They would say, okay, let's go to this guy's house and arrest him. Mm. But they don't. They go after him. They put the public at risk. They have a high-speed chase. They could hit people. They could knock people. This other guy could, you know, spin out and kill people. They mm. do that and put the public at risk because they want to stop that guy from breaking the law, not to protect everybody. If they wanted to protect everybody, they'd be like, ah, well, we got him. Let's go arrest him in his house later. You know, that's mm. not what they do because that's not their job. So it is it, – and bringing this back to crypto, so much of crypto teaches us to be sovereign to ourselves, to be responsible with our money, to, hey, you sent that to the wrong place. You didn't look <laughs> at this. You didn't double check that. You messed up. You lost it. Yeah. And it's the same thing with our protection and the protection of our family and our property. There's a lot that we have to take responsibility for. And I know there's some countries where it's a lot tougher because your government's not the most friendly. Mm, that's true. But um, in, in reality, no government is friendly. That's true. Uh, quick shout outs to Clement Table in the live chat and Poppy and V Vivo Triple Seven is saying to you, Sean, what why are you showing it? Go to Ukraine. The best with him, brother. Or the best to you, brother. I think they're saying you should take that pistol and go to Ukraine with it. Well, <laughs> that's a whole nother whole nother can of worms, man. Um, the Ukrainian people, awesome. Russian people, awesome. The governments sure have messed a lot of things up. Um, everybody knows the Ukrainian government did a lot of shady stuff. Uh, a lot of, I mean, Ukraine is one of the, the, the place where all governments went to launder their money, dude. Mm. Honestly. Um, but when it first started, dude, I, I wanted to. I was like thinking about, you know, I'd like to go to Ukraine and just, you know, because it's an injustice. Why Russia did it, I do understand. The United States did much worse, in my opinion. We, we did the same thing Russia did, but we were going to kill you. We we're going to kill your parents, Darko. Uh, whoever mm -hmm. made that comment, we were going to kill your parents. Mm. You know, uh, Russia was going to put nuclear weapons in Cuba. And uh, our government said, okay, then we'll, we'll have a nuclear war. And all this stuff's been declassified. All this stuff has come out. We put the whole world at risk. We're, we were going to blow everything up. Russia was going to blow everything up, the Soviet Union. We were going to end the human race, man, because they were coming too close to our border. And NATO did the same thing to Russia. We kept we we said we're not going to encroach. We're not going to expand. We, we promised and we mm. broke our promise. NATO, not just the United States, but NATO broke its promise a bunch of times. And we kept getting closer and closer to where we're right next to them in Ukraine. Mm. If they invaded Ukraine. They could have just said, hey, if you if, if you do this, we'll have a nuclear war. And they would have done the same thing that we did. And this has been brought up, not in the media a lot, because it makes us look bad. But the mm. United States was going to blow up the world. We we're going to have a nuclear war if Russia came to Cuba and Russia backed down. But mm. now that it's all there's all these documents that have been released, we know how close we came to ending the human race because of governments. Um, oh, yeah. Look what happened in Japan. But, yeah. Um, Back then. And everybody thought we we're going to learn, like when we dropped that bomb in Japan, it was we're, so, we're so scared. 
you know, now that, oh, my God, there's so much power. We have to we have to come together and be friends. But governments are run by people and power corrupts. And that's all they're that's all that they're there for. They're there to get anyone that goes into government eventually at that level. It's just about power and securing power. That's why they go into government and they make a hundred some thousand dollars a year, but they leave after four years of worth, you know. Yeah, but once they years. leave, they get paid for the rest of their lives. Or, well, yeah, but while they're there, they're they're making a hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Somehow they they're worth millions of dollars after a yeah. couple of years. Payoffs. Payoffs. I don't how how does that happen with math? Under the ta- under the table payoffs. Yeah, yeah. That's it. There's no other way about it. So and and, and look, honestly. I've known this for a long time. Government, politicians, they get into government, but before they do that, they have a side business, right? And then they go into government and then they start to produce perks for certain industries. For Mm -hmm. example, um, home insulation. You know those bats for home insulation? One of our previous governments, he he came in, he was, was a previous prime minister, and when he came into power, he had a side business for bat, the bats for the home insulations. They, he made them in a in a warehouse, and then he brought out this government grant that hey, if you decide to get home insulation installed, we'll give you three and a half thousand dollars from the government. But guess who's supplying the bats? It was the man himself. Same thing, man. Uh, With all the wars, there's I mean, they're all they're all plugged into the military industrial complex. What about that one guy, man? The the lead singer from uh, Midnight Oil. Oh yeah, yeah. I can't remember his name, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he he was uh, he was in Parliament, and uh, he was like, you know what, man, I'm gonna, I do more for more for the, you know, for the country by by being a, a musician. Hmm. Peter Robert Garrett, Pity Garrett, his name. Yeah, I know a guy that was uh, uh, friends with him. My my cousin was going to go to Australia. Because you guys don't have uh, insane asylums anymore, which mm. is fucking weird to me. But you give everyone is normal here, sure. You give criminally insane people their own house, but they have to have a guard that lives in the house with them. Mm. It's just and this is weird, man. But he was going to go over there to be a guard, and so you just live in the dude's house, and you're there to watch him because he's criminally insane. But he has like a nice house and just lives like a regular person but he's followed by a guard which that's weird it is anyway, he, he didn't end up he actually went over there and then they stopped him in customs and uh he wouldn't let him in the country so he had to go back oh really yeah because it was, it was tough to get to get in maybe he wasn't wearing a mask at the airport no this was right before this was before uh, i'm jake <laughs> yeah you know uh, a friend of mine's a, a billionaire mm. and <clears throat> He would he was like you don't wear a mask. He was like, no, nah, I really don't wear a mask much, man, because you know it's hard. Like I got breathing problems anyway, so it's like I just, he really can't wear a mask because it cuts down the oxygen level. But he was like, yeah, man, I don't wear a mask. Never know. I won't wear a mask when I travel. I was like, how do you travel if you you know it's like they force you? He's like, no, nah, man, it's a private jet. You gotta you gotta fly a private jet, Sean. You don't take. Oh yeah, no worries. I'll get one tomorrow. Yeah, I was like, I can't do that, Robert. <laughs> You know, can, can you buy me one, it's Robert? Not much, man. It's not much. You just fly private jets. Really, it's it's worth it. It's worth mm. it, man. <laughs> it's like instead of paying, you know, fifteen hundred, it's fifteen thousand. It's it's worth it. So it's like, yeah, no, I'll, I I would just yeah, have I'll, to wear the mask, man. I, I was I started watching this movie the other day called Ambulance, and it was funny because there was this group of robbers about to rob a bank or something like that. I think it was a bank. A bank, yeah. They were going to rob a bank, and they went underneath the building. They found an elevator, a lift, and all four of them were wearing masks. And then as the door was closing so they could go up into the bank, right, the door stops because someone stopped it with a hand, and the doors opened again. And there was this little, little old lady walking in with these gangsters in the lift, and she was wearing a COVID mask, right? And because she looked at these four criminals with the masks on, she didn't think anything of it. It was just normal, like. She thought that would work. I, I thought that's the first thing I thought of when it all started, dude. Because I went to the bank and I was like, "There's no people would have been shot, or at least the the security would have like jumped on as soon as you walk in. You walk into a bank yeah. with a hoodie and a mask or a motorcycle helmet. Not three years well. ago, no way, man. 
Yeah. And now, if you don't wear a, a hoodie and a mask, they're like, hey, 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 where's your mask? I can see your face. Get this, quit that. It's yeah, just weird. Now, I have my bank with a, with a, as a joke, with a mm. gas mask, a full gas mask. And that was normal, right? And everybody was like, hey, good on you. All right. Yeah. Look at you going the extra mile. I'm like, it, it, was, it was a joke, man. It, it was a yeah, joke. Today, today, you could walk into your local bank wearing a ninja outfit, dressed up as a ninja. And go, give me my money and pass over your card. Yes, sir. No problem. How much would you like today? This is so strange. That's changing. Changed. And yeah. this is a big part of uh, the defiance of government in California. It's a terrible place. It's like a like Texas is a, is not really American. I was everybody asked me. You know, you asked me. It's like you're in America. It's like well, I'm Texas. It's kind of America. Um, and California's the same way. It's not really America. Neither is New York. Uh, they're very different than the rest of the country. But like in in California, there's a lot of stores that are banning masks. Like you can't shop here if you wear a mask, which completely goes against what their government is saying. Yeah. But they're tired of getting robbed. Yeah. Uh, because also in like in, in California, they made it to where it's not against the law to steal. If you steal less than $1,200, it's not not a crime. Really? So people go in with like a trash bag and a calculator and they steal eleven hundred dollars of the stuff and just walk out. What? And it's 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 terrible. You look up the videos, dude. It's it's terrible. Um wow. and if you call the police, they're like, it's only a misdemeanor, that's a ticket. We're not we're not gonna send someone out for that. And wow. they're like, Hey, do you have their ID? And that's another thing. If they steal stuff, they're like, We're not gonna do anything if you don't have like a an ID of the person, a picture video. And they're like, yeah, but they're wearing a mask. So now they're like, hey, you can't wear a mask. If you want to mm. come to the store, you have to take your mask off. Oh, so wow. things are changing on that on that uh, that front. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, Sean, before we give this a uh, wrap as well, it's a quick shout out to Wolf Berlick. He's a passionate Crypto Tonight member. And if anybody else wants to join and become a member to Crypto Tonight on YouTube, please visit the YouTube channel and you'll see memberships or join. And you can also become a passionate member where not only will you get receive perks, but you will also receive shout outs to non-partnered streams. So this one, although it is on Huobi, it is a non-partnered in a way because this is our own actual show mm -hmm. with me and Sean. So yeah, me and you can join Satoshi Sean, join on mine, and you get special streams where I, I, I show my nipples. I am so there, Sean. I don't have I it. I don't so have a join, there. dude. I need to do that. I need to show me how. I don't have a yeah. Patreon. I don't have a join. Oh, forget about Patreon. To me, that was useless. But um, what I did was before I created mine, I looked at other channels, see what they were doing and how they were doing it. And then I just created one. But yeah, no problem, dude. I can help you out with that. Cool. So, yeah, done. Awesome. I think that just about wraps it for this week's edition of the Lazy Crypto Talk Show, Sean. We went over, a, uh, over an hour. So that was a long show, man. Yes, and we had questions from the live chat, which is also always awesome. Good to see. And um, we covered some crypto topics and non-crypto topics, which is always fun to have a bit of a mix-up. So this is an open talk show, and why not? So, Sean, same time, same place next week. Yeah, buddy. Good to see you. Good, hope to see you guys there. Remember to go and subscribe to our channels on YouTube. Yeah, really yeah. Appreciate your support. How many people we got watching? Um, again, with that... We had no notification pushed for this stream, and we've had 7,400 people watching on the Huobi Global app and a combined 42,800 likes, which is absolutely awesome. 42,000 so, likes. That's pretty damn good. Really, really good. Again, considering there was no push notification push in the app. So, uh, we haven't reached that level yet, Sean. We're, you know, we're not the elite yet, but we're getting there. Hey, Gerald. Good to see you guys here. Uh, love you all very much. Stay, uh, stay happy, healthy. We'll see y'all next week. Ragola! I'm going for a video. Hold on. Ah, Here we go. I can only hold it for so long. Ah. Hey, man, I'm telling you, man, you got to get yourself some of that Bitcoin, man. You go on the internet, you click, click, click. You got to steal some Bitcoin, put in your wallet, and you holler. They call it holler.